What's going on, everybody? Josh Engelman here for Stochastic.com, back again with the process for Wednesday, August 10th. We're going to take a look at last night's MLB results. Thanks a lot, Rockies, for being awful. When I say awful, they succeeded, which was not good for me. Uh, and I'm going to take a look at some of the round one showdown contest for the FedEx St. Jude, which kicks off tomorrow. We looked at the golf contest as a whole yesterday. I'm going to look at showdown today. I actually registered tennis this morning as well, keeping that same sort of theme that we see on this show, looking to hit about $100 in entries. They have a one, they have one big contest that's a $15 entry contest. Uh, that is not what I'm in. I'm basically on everything underneath that. So like random $1, $3 type stuff. It's very low prize pools, like your 2Ks and your 3Ks. But I got bored this morning and wanted to look at tennis. So I registered tennis. Not that that matters, but we'll talk golf and then we're going to talk baseball. So hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you know when everything goes live. Remove my coffee. Follow me on Twitter at Josh Engelman. Let me know in the comments if there's something you want to see in these videos. We're wide open until we get to October. We can take a look at anything. This is a, a blank canvas for you guys for the next two months until we get to the NBA season. So if there's something you want me to dig into, um, it doesn't have to just be like looking at contests. We could look at strategy. We could look at anything. So hit me up in the comments if you have any questions. Last night, um, not what I was hoping for. I had uh, a few lineups that were trending very, very well. It just so happened that the Rockies, for the most part, broke the slate. If you didn't have the Rockies, you needed to thread a very thin needle with the Braves. But um, Rockies were really going to be the team that got you there, and I'll show you that in a second. If we quickly look at pitching to start, actually, I need to re-add the order column. There we go. If we quickly look at pitching, just to get an idea of how everything went and to show my exposures, Highest owned guys on the slate yesterday were Otani and Bieber. I was basically right with the field on both of those guys. Um, after that, my biggest stand was on Alec Manoa, which didn't go well, unfortunately. I don't think this is the right exposure. 33, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Yeah, this is not the right exposure because I had... Wait, wait, who are we missing? Who went crazy? 36 of Bieber. Maybe it's not, maybe it is the right exposure. Now I'm just going to open up my model and, and see, but I feel like I had more of someone else. Maybe I'm wrong. Either way, I had a lot of Bieber, which was good. I thought I had more Carrasco, and I'm almost positive that I did, at which point these exposures are not going to be what we're really looking for. 22% Carrasco, 36% Bieber, 30. No, I guess I'm right. Okay. I thought I had more Carrasco than that. Oh, well, what are you going to do? Uh, so exposures are correct. I had a lot of Bieber. I had a lot of Otani, but uh, Manoa was the one that hurt me the most. Everything else you really, like I touched Cole, Carrasco, Wheeler. These are all the things that everybody else was on. Um, I did not have very much Urias. He was 5% owned. Man, I could have swore I had more Carrasco than that. That feels so less interesting. Anyway, Bieber was great. 32 fantasy points. He was the leader in the clubhouse last night, and uh, I had him. But pitching was pretty easy yesterday. You were going to get really good pitchers by default. Hitting is where it got a little different, and this is what we saw in hitting yesterday. The Colorado Rockies starting lineup hung 158 fantasy points. The clear, clear winner for yesterday. That's what? 40 basically more than Atlanta, 40 basically more than the Dodgers. I I essentially didn't have these guys and you you really did kind of need it. That's what got you to the top. Most of the top 20 is made up by Rocky stacks. You can see some stray Braves stacks poking in there while you still get a couple Rockies because the Braves were also a really good stack, but the Rockies were the cheat code to the top. That's for sure. I just didn't have it. I mean, 34 from... If you had Gritchick and CJ Crone, you were in a great spot. But Gritchick, Crone, Rogers, McMahon, that's a big-time number on a four-man stack. I did have the Braves. Um, I was neutral on Riley. I, I had enough Acuna. Probably a little bit heavier on Olsen, and that, would, that didn't really help me at all. But... 
still, you needed Colorado. I didn't really have the Dodgers. That didn't help. I didn't have the Red Sox. That didn't help. I didn't have the Padres. That didn't help. Teams that I had. So clearly I had a lot of St. Louis. They were very underwhelming. Uh, thanks to Paul DeYoung getting to 18, the only one with a real pulse. Braves were second for me, and then the Mets were third. But this is the one that I thought was going to get me to where I needed to be. The Rangers started off really, really well. I had a decent chunk of Rangers. Semyon, Thompson, Garcia, Seager all got into that low double digits mark. I just couldn't get them to get over the hump. But that was the spot where I thought I was going to get a little bit different. And as we look at it here, I want to see if I can find that lineup. Because I had one that was really trending well. Yeah, this is the one. So this was sitting in second in the Minimax pretty late until uh, Colorado really just cranked it up and got into double digits. I love this lineup. I love the construction of it. I was really happy to see it. I sent it to Adam at one point in time when we were talking about the way that it looked. Chalk pitcher, chalk pitcher. Carrasco, Bieber. No problem. Chalk E, Alejandro Kirk, 13% owned. One of the better hitting catchers you're going to find. Love it. Austin Riley. Chalky third baseman. 16% owned. Uh, to me, a very good play. Uh, 33 fantasy points. Obviously great. And then Mark Kana, Leadoff hitter for the Mets. Great spot. Highly owned. So we're talking chalk with the pitchers. Chalk with a one-off catcher. Chalk with a one-off third baseman. Chalky with the one-off outfielder. Seems like a lot of chalk. But then you look at the stack and it's 1%, 2%, 1%, 1%, 1%, super, super low owned Rangers stack filled in around the borders with all of the highest owned guys that I could basically get into these spots. I love the construction of this lineup. If I built this by hand, I'd be incredibly proud of it. The fact that it came out of my process makes me feel so much happier because this is exactly how I would want this to be built. A, an ultra low owned stack filled in i'm not i don't have to make any big stances after that i can take the best possible plays to fill out that lineup so while it didn't ultimately get there you know nate low wasn't enough there wasn't enough runs for texas the structure of this lineup excellent i would not change a single thing so texas were the teams that i thought might have a chance to really propel me to the top but Without having the without having a lot of the Rockies, it wasn't going to matter much. Like here's a three man Rocky stack, Crone, Rogers, Montero. That's actually pretty good. Jonah Heim and the four man Ranger stack was the problem. But again, low owned, low owned, low owned straight through here. Chalky Acuna, Chalky Carrasco, Chalky Otani. I love this lineup construction too. Four three one. Um, the one being a heavily owned Acuna. That's the way that I want to use these single inch or these uh, one-off type guys. That's that's the way that I want to augment that in a lineup that's already um, relatively low or not even relatively, that is very low owned. Another thing that I wanted to show because I did have a lot of Cardinals yesterday. They were the clear top stack. It, there's, no, there's no way to come to a conclusion that the Cardinals weren't the best stack on paper yesterday. They had to be first. Whatever method you're using to play DFS, ignoring any ownership constraints, the Cardinals had to be the number one stack yesterday. If, if you had any other situation, you need to reevaluate the things that you are doing. But I played the Cardinals a little bit different and I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. So they were my second most exposed five-man stack. But the Mets, the Cardinals, the Cubs, the Rangers, the Braves, that's all, they're all pretty similar in terms of volume. Similarly, in four-man stacks, are they in those lineups? Yes. Are they the number one? No. St. Louis was my augmentation stack. They were with everything else. It was basically four-man or five-man somebody plus St. Louis. 45 three-man stacks of the Cardinals. Now, did that get me anywhere? Not really. But as you can see here for these four threes, the Cardinals were just basically permanently my best three-man option. And then I was rotating around it. That works for me on a day where they're going to pull a ton of ownership. Do I want a couple of their big five men and four man bullets? Of course. Getting them here in the threes where I'm still getting exposure to the best possible teams. And then I'm getting to, I did it again. I hate it. I hate it so much. I can't stop swiping my mouse when I'm in line of study. And it just sends me screaming back to the first page of Fantasy Cruncher. It's really, really, really annoying for me. 
but I can get back to me really quickly. Let's go back to those three-man uh, Cardinal stacks. That'll see that allows me. These are all my three-man Cardinal stacks. That allows me to go four-man Boston, uh, four-man Rockies, Nats, Dodgers, Rangers, Brewers. I'm getting a lot of different options here. So when it catches, when the Cardinals go for seven runs, eight runs, where they're good, not great, that filler is where I can get a Ranger stack to separate from the pack, a Red Sox stack to separate from the pack. So I'm very happy with the lineup construction I had yesterday. I just didn't have the team that went nuts. If we look back at it and the Rangers score like four more runs, it looks so much better for me. But in the grand scheme of things, there's nothing I can do there. I'm happy with the lineup construction. That's really all that I can ask for. Woo, that's a lot of talking. Wow, up to 11 minutes. Yeah, I've been going. All right, uh, contest evaluation for tomorrow because this is when it locks. We're locking tomorrow. These are the contests available for round one showdown. PGA tomorrow on DraftKings, FedEx St. Jude. We got the flop shot. That's the big buy-in contest. 70K prize pool, $15 buy-ins, 5,500 entries. That is the best payout structure you're going to get. I'm obviously not maxing anything with $2,200 in it. So I kind of hit everything else I can get into. Short game, divot, birdie, caddy, and the albatross. That all totaled up to $98. It's not the best payout structure. Like, I really don't like the albatross at all. Um, the caddy, not much better. I wanted some extra golf action. So I wanted to get into round one. So we're going to be playing, what, 20, 40, 43 lineups tomorrow in showdown plus the regular lineups. If you are playing though, the short game's the contest. I mean, it's a 4K prize pool, so it's very, very minimal. But at the same time, 4,700 entries, uh, it should be incredibly soft. 20 max, so you can build those by hand if you really need to, not much of an issue. If you're just looking to fire one single bullet, the divot looks okay. I mean, 34 and a half times you're buying, it's soft as hell. It costs you a dollar. It's a thousand dollar prize pool, nothing too crazy. I like it, but I'm firing away at golf. I'm firing away at everything that I can find now. For tennis, I got into basically everything that exists that isn't the true pay-up option contest. Um, let's see if I can uh, if I can pull that up quickly. Well, I'm gonna have to log in now, so don't need you guys to see any of that login information because I bounce back and forth from the sports book and. Um, and like the fantasy side of this so frequently, but I, I'm not allowed to bet in North Carolina. I end up getting booted from a login perspective constantly, which is kind of annoying. All right, so for tennis, this is what's out there right now. Um, oh, so basically like everything that I've already gotten into is already dead. So maybe, what's the easiest way that I could look at this stuff. I'll go to my contest page. Because they're not great contests. Let me let me be very clear here. Okay, we got it. So I put 20 entries into the ace. It's a 3k 20 max. I put a single entry, a $6 entry into the 1k hold. And then I put six entries into which is the max into the $600 backhand. Just wanted to test out tennis. We got tennis projections on the website, so go to stochastic.com to get those. Um, not only should you do that, you could also do tennis at Prize Picks, presenting sponsor of this video. Go to the link in the description of this video, click it, then sign up using the promo code AWESEMO, A W E S E M O. Get yourself up to $100 of an instant match deposit bonus. Just take advantage of those things, guys. If you put in $100, they're going to give you another $100. It's like winning a double up for free. You would do it if you could enter it as a contest. Why not just put the money in and do it? Take advantage, build your bankroll that way. But yeah, I'm, uh, I'm gonna mess around and get into the tennis streets. We're already into golf, both showdown and for the main slate. MMA, we're gonna take a look at for tomorrow. We've got an early baseball slate, but we look at baseball so frequently that I wanna try looking at some of these other contests. I actually did, do like the big tennis contest that's running. It's just outside of our purview for this, but the ace, 300 bucks up top, you know, $20 to get into it. If I can think it, that's awesome. We'll see where we end up. Never messed around with tennis before. 
that contest is filled, but um, it's tennis. So these, this kind of stuff runs basically every day. Anyway, that's it for the process, everybody. Tough beat in baseball. We'll run it back again for this early slate. I think it locks at one, six games, I believe. So come join us for that. I'll be on live before lock with Adam up until one o'clock. Uh, good luck on everything you're doing. Make sure you get your golf lineups in tonight. Make sure you're watching PGA Live before lock tonight at 8 p.m. Help you set those lineups before lock tomorrow morning. Good luck, everybody. Thanks for joining me. And uh, shout out to Prize Picks once again.